it is early. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in, regardless of the fact that it is early. I mean, where you guys are, you're probably just making dinner. I would be willing to bet. <laughs> Texas folk. I still feel like it's weird that in Texas, they're still only one hour behind us. That's like halfway across the country. I feel like they should at least be two hours behind us. Yeah, I mean they're on the fringe of that that uh the next two to came two hours, but yeah, I see what you mean. They're like Being, right there. Yeah, it just feels Almost. weird. I always would have thought they're like since we do so much with them, or you know, it's just like I've, I've it's <laughs> it's crazy. Oh well, <laughs> but yeah, we're doing it at six now due to <clears throat> you know circumstances beyond our control. We're deciding to try out the earlier time slot. Yeah, Let's see what happens. You know, it's going to be a six to seven, and if we go a little longer, we go a little longer. If we don't go a little longer, we don't go a little longer. Yeah, we're just gonna, you know, this is. I didn't put a post out there because I was lazy. I was supposed to let people like you know <laughs> know that we're changing times, but you know, if you got those noties turned on, like Strikeout Beer said, Noti Gang, you'd be good to go. It doesn't matter what time we go live. You just be like, oh, I don't know, the field is live. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, if 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 you got the noties on, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a bunch of pictures of people who aren't you in the montage. True. True. That's been our montage for a long time now, though. This is the first time you've brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Still working. Don't bog circumstances. Fine. We'll move on. I'm just trying to kill some time, but whatever. Fine. We'll do you. All right. I got it. <sighs> Uh. No brainer IPA. That's for uh, our strikeout beer boys. Very nice. I'm assuming you're not drinking anything. Uh, not today. Wap wap wap. All righty, yeah. so let's do it. Go sports. Let's do it. We need an update. Y'all need an update. All right, we'll work on that. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we can work on it. Let's do this dance. Let's make sure everyone out there is flossing. Strikeout beer. Oh, yeah. Richard jumped in here. Ryan Francis, Alan. Let's hit the share button. Let's do the subscribing and the following and all the stuff because that's what flossing is all about. It's about follow, like, observe, share, and subscribing to anything on out the field related. Durf. What else is there to do? Well, you can follow, like, observe, and share on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, which we are currently live on all by searching at OOTF Podcast. Make sure to click the link in the video description to get all the other links you need to follow this great show. Also, make sure to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts so we know how we're doing and what you like or dislike about this award-winning show. can't believe anyone would not like anything about the show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's got me, which is speaks for itself. And then there's obviously <laughs> Durf, which everyone just loves Durf. I mean, Apparently. We got, we got <laughs> hashtag Team Durf. We even got hashtag Team Dirt. I don't know what dirt is. I think you have to mistype. No, no, he meant to say that. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely he meant he did Ryan Francis definitely meant to say that. <laughs> You're not my real dad. Don't tell me what to do. All right. So that segment is brought to you by Stefan Diggs, obviously. As always. Mm-hmm. We'll have him on the show one of these days. So let's get on with it. Let's go to one of our a segment we haven't touched on in a while. Yeah. The yes. sports sports. <clears throat> sports. <laughs> <clears throat> so what we should I think we should flip this around. We want to make sure we go from like less exciting to more exciting. We're gonna build. We're gonna build. Mm-hmm. So just so everyone's aware, Major League Baseball is what starting day is like now. Thursday. I like y'all's logo up in the top left. Oh, so, oh god. Um. Yeah, Ma- Major League Baseball is literally happening two days. Yeah, that's exciting. I'm, I'm it excited. Is exciting. I'm I'm personally excited because yeah. I've been having basketball shoved down my throat for the past couple of weeks here, and I just can't I can't do it any longer. Oh yeah. If if LeBron James sneezes, <laughs> it's it's like twenty four hour coverage. Huh. That might not be a good reference because if you sneeze these days, it could be Rona. 
That but actually, true. that kind of makes sense. That it yeah. would be. that's besides the point. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of basketball. <laughs> you see that? You see in the the women's NCAA tournament there, the UConn mm-hmm. and Baylor game, and the girl got fouled at the end, mm-hmm. but she didn't. That the it wasn't called. Yep. And then, like for some godforsaken reason, some like LeBron James thinks he has to insert himself into anything that happens. So he's like, "That should have been a foul." Yeah, it should have been, but I don't need you reporting on it. I have, I just ever anything basketball related, I'm, I'm kind of over for the most part. We'll get to basketball. I care about in a second, but baseball, baseball. I know strikeout beer is excited. It's right in their name, strikeout beer. Yeah. <laughs> strike out as part of baseball. <laughs> Ryan Francis doesn't like sports. He says it's overrated, but he does like baseball. He also likes terrible movies. For well, anyone interested, make sure you turn into tune into Let's Do a Podcast tonight at nine. I will be on there as a guest, and so will Rapid Dave. It's Ryan Francis's cool. podcast. Very I nice. watched a movie today just to prepare for this podcast. Oh. And I will tell you, it was the worst hour and a half of my life. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Tune in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so my team is the Mariners. I can't wear my Mariners hat because there's a blue screen behind me. But I, it's God. They're doomed. They're basically doomed. I don't. I don't know what you want for the Mariners to do at this point. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be their year this year. 2021 was what Jerry told everyone. That's what he told the fans. 2021 was the Mariners' year. Um. I don't, I don't see that happening personally. They did. They brought back James Paxton, so that's exciting. Big Maple, yeah. They they literally put a little, you know. So I think some fans bring a little maple tree to the game when he pitches. I don't know why. It's just it's just a thing. It's just a thing, Fred. Come on, work. <laughs> It's All just, right. It's just it's a tree. I don't oh. I'm trying to grasp the anything that makes me happy about the Mariners and I'm just I have nothing. <sighs> I don't need LeBron weighing in on anything, so why are you a Seattle fan? I'm a I don't know. I'm a Seattle fan because back when the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl in 04, 05 season against the Steelers. I decided to root for the Seahawks in that Super Bowl. My parents mm-hmm. were Eagles fans, so I kind of grew up an Eagles fan. But once I started rooting for the Seahawks in that Super Bowl, I was like, oh, I'm just going to be a Seahawks fan. I don't know why. I'm just going to. I was 10. Like, I'm, that's my new team. I'm doing it. So I did there it. You go. Yeah. And I've been with them ever since. So once I started attaching myself to other sports like baseball and, you know, well, that's about it really for Seattle. <laughs> Until recently. Or right now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been attaching myself to other Seattle teams as I get into other sports. So there you go. That's the story. TJ, yay, sports. I respect that. He has. Okay. See, I was a I was a bandwagon Seahawks fan back mm-hmm. in 2004, though, and I was 10. So you can't yell at me. Are you really a bandwagon if you never left? Well, technically, I was a... Well, no. I guess that's the other part of it because a bandwagon like jumps from team to team. Right. But it's like if your team goes to the Super Bowl and it's like a fan of that team, like if your friend jumps on the Seahawks when they go to the Super Bowl or like the Bills when they go to the Super Bowl, but they've never been a Bills fan before, you're going to call them a bandwagon fan, right? Oh, well, yeah. Pretty much. Like, so, you know, that's what people would say to me back in 04 or 05 when I was 10 years old. So you can't really say anything. What are you going to do, punk? Say something. <laughs> I'm 10. <laughs> Leave me alone. Just shared the absolute ass out of this fantastic stream. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is for Rapid Dave. I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot guy shit. There you go. Rapid Dave's doing hot guy shit. Uh. <laughs> so, but I mean, your Dodgers, though. I mean, that's your team. I don't, I, yeah. I don't know. Some people like to call you a bandwagon. Some of our closer friends, you know might call you that but i think you were just looking for a team to get into yeah i I was you know over a year ago before you know before the season even started i was looking for a team when we you know we were in cooperstown um but yeah you know from i hadn't read a ton up on them 
you know, I'm still in that. I've, I've been super into golf right now and I've been watching a lot on TV, but um, just to kind of, you know, I keep an eye on the Dodgers. You know, they've had a couple of weird spring training games where like they didn't score anything. Like they just got smoked by the other team. I would assume they're resting their, you know, their better no players. No one important is playing. Right. They might get one at bat. Like, like this is, yeah. Like, like this is week four of the preseason. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I did see that they had, you know, a little bit of a lineup change for their, you know, their fifth starting pitcher. Um, I'm thinking of who it was now. Oh, well. Um, but, yeah, you can people can call me a bandwagon fan. It doesn't bother me. You know, I ironically, that I became a Dodgers fan. They win the World Series. And I actually have <laughs> the World Series championship T-shirt, um, which is just really cool to have. Like, I feel like it's so foreign to me. It's weird. But. Uh, um, owning, owning something where one of your teams actually won right. something yeah, yeah that's weird i mean the Celtics have won championships i just never got anything but um but yeah the, the dodgers are definitely they're just they're just ready to roll and everything i've read they're you know they spent the money they that they, 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 they could and you know i don't see why they couldn't make the world series again this year I mean, I don't follow baseball too closely, mm-hmm. but as far as I can tell, the Mariners are going one way. The Dodgers are just looking like they're staying at the top. Yeah. I don't see why not. I mean, the Dodgers, by the looks of it, did what the Buccaneers did. Mm-hmm. They kept their whole team together. Yeah. Maybe like one small pitching change. I don't know. They, they, mm-hmm. they kept their championship team together. Run it back. No reason why they can't, I don't think. Maybe I don't. something the Chiefs couldn't do. Something the Chiefs could not do. The NCAA tournament. <laughs> we just wanted to get do that segment because so we can get our allegiances <laughs> straight. Yeah. Just so we can get it on record. You know, beginning of the season. These are our teams. Mm-hmm. One is I'm just going to suffer all season. I'm completely fine with that. I normally do. And then the Dodgers <laughs> will roll to like 102, 103 wins. And yeah. Yeah. There you go. NCAA tournament is down to six teams after Baylor and Houston won their respective matches. This is for the men's. Sorry. Should make that clear. Um, Tonight is the one seed Gonzaga versus the six seed USC and the one seed Michigan versus the 11 seed UCLA. And on the other side, we just said Baylor versus Houston. So it's either going to be, you know, it's just weird. This is this part's weird to me because after all the upsets we've seen, like the whole storyline for this NCAA tournament has mm-hmm. been like upsets all over the place. 15 seed, 12 seed, 11, 10, 8, mm-hmm. just all these weird matchups going on. Right. And we could still possibly end up with three one seeds and, a, and we have a guaranteed two seed in the final four. Pending another upset of a six over a one or even an 11 over a one. Mm-hmm. We could still end up with mostly one season and a two. Yeah. So basically all this hype over upsets, 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 when it really comes down to it, guess what? The top seeds are still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh yeah, not much left for upsets there really. You know, it's you know, these these fake I wouldn't say like they're they're probably good teams, but like you see it kind of like these upsets, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then really, it's you know they're not taking down the top, you know, the cream of the crop. At they're the playing top. like middle of the tier, you know, right? So like it, it, they're good upsets, and they're really good stories, and you know it's great to see that for en- entertainment value, and you know just all that for the Mark Madness. But you know, looking at this, you know it. It's still the best of the best for the most part. I mean, there's no reason why USC couldn't upset Gonzaga. I mean, I don't, I'm not following basketball very closely, but I don't see why not. There's no. Yeah, a lot of people have said Gonzaga's had a soft schedule, yeah. like their whole season. They just play in a soft, a soft conference, and then mm-hmm. being a one seed, they play all the weak, all the weaker opponents, and right. So a lot of people are saying this is where their undefeated streak ends. You know, it could be USC. Yeah, and you know UCLA just you know went into overtime against Alabama 
I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Them. Yeah. That was a, that was an intense game. I, you know, I caught a little bit of that. Um, why not take down Michigan? Wouldn't bother me. Imagine uh-huh. having a six and eleven seed on one side of the final four going against it, and then a one and a two <laughs> on the other side. That's oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, over here we have the two heavyweights, the one seed Baylor and the two seed Houston. And over here we have two kids just slapping each other in the face. They're going to lose, but you know, just have fun watching them. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a couple of toddlers in the corner. <laughs> I want to go back in time here. Ryan Francis said, what's the pie of the day? I think you know, just a, if, if Alan is still here, let's say key lime pie is the pie of the day. Just to piss him off because I know he doesn't like key lime pie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Key lime pie is the pie of the day. Should, we should probably get like a – should become a segment. We got to work on this. Yeah. Either a pie a day or a cake of the day. We got we to gotta, we gotta work on that. There you go. Want to see Nicolas Cage playing a baseball team? No one wants to see Nicolas Cage anywhere. Strikeout Beer says he's going for a jog, but got on the laptop. I feel like that's a lie. Are you? I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think Brandon Rapid Dave goes on jogs. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Ryan Francis says, for someone who doesn't like sports, I sure love watching this show every week. We appreciate you being yeah. here. Nicholas Cage needs to do a Final Four movie with zombies and a volleyball stripper lady named Pam. That seems like something Nicholas Cage would come up with. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. Nicholas Cage. He's off. Oh, Strike out beers out right now. All right. Every day. Nice. Good for nice. you. I didn't know that about you. I just learned I learned something today about Rapid Dave. Uh, so who do you got? I mean, is there something like let's let's do this right now because if, it, by the time we do our show next week it'll all be over. Yeah, because I think the last matchup is Monday. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. It's interesting. Cause they're playing. It seems like a very expedited or hurried process this year for match madness. I feel like in years past it seemed like it takes forever. I think it's because they're all in, they do. They've been doing more matches. Right, because it's all it's all in Indianapolis, right? Like all these teams are in the so. same yeah. same city right now, right? So, so I think they've been cranking easy. out more games. Yeah, so it makes it easier, which is nice. Um, yeah, I think it will. I think it might be over over time. Uh, we're back on next week. So, do you have a winner? A winner. Because right now we have six we have six teams. Gonzaga, USC, Michigan, UCLA, Baylor, and Houston. Do you have a winner? I'm gonna take Baylor. Okay. I don't know Baylor. why. Just gonna That was All the right. first team that uh popped out at me. That's kind of funny because I'm gonna take Houston. <laughs> So, so we're not, we're not gonna one have of the teams. <laughs> come, I think, the end of the day on Saturday, we're going to have an answer. <laughs> of, at least one person will be wrong by then. <laughs> you don't have to wait till Monday. <laughs> Sorry, got beer. We got Gonzaga. Baylor looked tough yesterday. They're one seed for a reason. Baylor's good. Yeah. Baylor is very good. Houston is very good. Gonzaga is very good. As much as people don't want to say Gonzaga is good. Gonzaga is a very good basketball team. They haven't played good competition. Look, there's been teams this entire co- this entire tournament, two seeds, three seeds, four seeds, five seeds that play not good competition. But guess what? They lost. Mm-hmm. Gonzaga's disciplined. They they if they they go and they go out there and crush anyone they play. It's not like they're going out there and struggling against these teams that people say aren't very good. They don't mm-hmm. struggle at all. They go out there and they win by 15 plus points every single game. Right. They're not they're not even letting up on the gas pedal, man. They're just like pedal to the metal, we're going to crush the crap out of you. That's what they do. So, I mean, they could it's a good choice. I know a lot of people are picking Gonzaga, but I like Houston. Right. USC and UCLA, no. This fun story, they made it here. Mhm. 
maybe they get an upset and make it to the final four. That'll be fun, but there's no way they win. Yeah. What do we got over here? Gonzaga sucks, says Allen. Michigan is a one seed and they suck. I don't know if they suck. <laughs> They're not good, but <laughs> a pie bet. Do you want to do a pie bet for March Madness? Virtually, this is just the Baylor Houston game, really. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And it, we can take it. Do you want to take it off? We can think about it. We'll let that. Let's let the guys in the comments think about it. All right. All right, so everyone in the comments, help us out with a pie bet. Maybe just a pie to a face again for the Baylor and Houston game. Because virtually it was supposed to be who wins the tournament, but it just turned into who wins against (laughs) Baylor against Houston (laughs) accidentally. (laughs) Just got yelled at by Facebook for saying, oh, Lordy, okay. (laughs) Well, I'm not going to say it. Oh, boy. All right, let's move over to NFL news while they work on a pie bet. It might just be a pie to the face. We'll figure it out. We got 38 minutes to figure it out. Mm -hmm. The big thing in the NFL, here we go. Blockbuster trades. This was crazy Mm -hmm. because, you know, the first bit of news was shocking. And then the second bit of news was like, whoa, like you don't see that. Usually you don't even see trades this far out from the draft move up that far into the draft and then let alone get a second trade within the top 10 it's nuts Mm -hmm. oh blockbuster trade we had in the in the first round first the san francisco 49ers have moved up to the number three seed which gave miami the number 12 and gave them the 12th overall pick miami along with a third round pick which was just the compensatory pick for robert sala getting hired so it wasn't really a big loss there, but but they gave up their first round picks in 2022 and 2023. Okay, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Was that Billy Mays? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Call now, and Miami will trade up to the Eagle spy at number six. Number six giving the Eagles the 12th overall pick. And Miami gets number six, and they give up a fifth-round pick, and the Eagles number 12. Oh, well, okay, hold on. I got to reread this. This is weird. <laughs> yeah, it's I, little... I, got, I got all messed up by trying to be funny. Miami made a trade with the Eagles to move back into the top 10 at number six, plus they got a fifth-round pick, and giving the Eagles the number 12, number 123rd in the fourth round, and 2022's first-round pick. Oh, there we go. Got it. Nailed it. That's a. Uh, it's a lot. It's a. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I try. I tried reading that like really backwards. Was, uh, I tried like <laughs> skipping ahead to this part, and that was bad. But so let's let's do let's do for the 49ers first here. Miami backs out. Mm-hmm. Miami thinks, you know, we don't need <clears throat> this. We have a pretty solid team. This is without knowing the Eagles trade. Right. Miami's like, we trust Tua. We said he's our guy. We're going to let him ride this year and see what happens. We got some weapons in free agency. I like our guys from last year. You know, everything seems like we can make a run at it with our team from last year. So let's just, let's just drop back and get some more draft capital because they have, they have a lot of draft capital in case people are wondering. They have what? nine first round picks over the next three years or something. It's just, it's something asinine. Something, yeah, like that. Eight eight or nine. It's ridiculous. So the real question is the 49ers moving up to number three. Mm-hmm. This is no longer a secret, right? Can we just, can we just say they're drafting a quarterback and be done with it? I would say so. No team. And that, that I'm aware of in mm-hmm. NFL history would ever be stupid enough to move up from number 12 to three all the way to three with Miami Mm -hmm. all the way up to three and then proceed to give up the next two years of first round draft picks for a wide receiver an offensive lineman. Right. That's just not worth the risk. If a wide receiver and offensive lineman doesn't pan out, Okay, you just move on with your day if you picked one at 12. But you're going to give up your next first two 
No, that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. That's just, it just it's just not a thing. So they're moving up to get a quarterback. The question is who, and that's the game that we're all playing now. <laughs> who are they looking at? Do you have a prediction? Yeah, you're the, you're the mock draft guy. I know you got your mock well, drafts over there. You're you're loving it. What <laughs> what are people saying? What are you saying? Um. So right now, you know, with the change kicking Miami out of their that three spot, um, everything I've seen has been very back and forth between Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Um, because you know it's been consensus pick for you know at least a few weeks now that it's Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson for one and two. Um, I feel more comfortable picking Justin Fields than Trey Lance in the situation. I think Trey Lance, Trey Lance is a little bit on the overrated, overrated side. Um, I've seen drafts where he goes at two. I've seen drafts where he goes all the way down to 15 for the Patriots. And so, but Justin Fields has been a top, a top 10 quarterback, I think throughout this entire time I've been, you know, compiling all this data. Um, so I'm going to go with Justin Fields for San Francisco, San, San Fran. All right. All right. And Alan says he thinks you get to throw the pie in the face of the other person. Like literal throwing of a pie. Oh. And then other things while making fun of us. It's not very nice. <laughs> it's, it's called bullying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think they they, t- they take? I uh, I'm going against the grain a little bit. All right, because because I'm especially for me because some of the people in the sports media world that are higher up there that I normally say I dislike, mm-hmm. I am now agreeing with, which makes me nauseous a little bit. <laughs> I hate it when it's like I agree with these people, right? But for the first time in my life, I I'm. Like I came to my own conclusion, and then these people virtually came out after even I said this to myself, like who who they think they're te- they're taking. Mm-hmm. I think they're taking Mac Jones. Interesting. I I have seen that not as often, but I have seen that one. Like it just makes sense for Kyle Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta worked with Matt Ryan, a yep. sort of athletic, but mainly a pocket passer that works heavy in play right. action. And then he moves yep. to San Francisco and works with Jimmy Garoppolo, who is semi-athletic, but mostly works with play action and a lot of movement in the backfield, jet sweep kind of stuff. That's yeah. what Mac Jones did in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Alabama is heavy with the action in the backfield, just kind of like the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if the Kansas City Chiefs were in the 49ers position right now and Andy Reid was over there and they didn't have Patrick Mahomes, they would probably be taking Mac Jones. Accurate passer, semi athletic, yep. works yep. well with in play action systems. It just makes sense. It just right. seems like the kind of guy that would fit in that offense well. And I'm not saying Justin Fields isn't it just seems like he uses his legs more often and he's not as accurate as right. Mac Jones. Which is an Ohio State quarterback issue. <laughs> that stigma <laughs> I'm <laughs> That's the reason. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Right. I don't want Justin Fields strictly mm-hmm. because of the stigma of Ohio State quarterbacks. Right. That might be a stupid reason, mm-hmm. but it's at some point the cycle has to be broken by someone you'd like to think. But until I see it, I'm not going anywhere near Ohio State quarterbacks. I'm just not. Right. We just did, we covered that in another show like a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. We went over the list of Ohio State quarterbacks. There was like one with a winning record, and there was like 15, <laughs> 20 of them. It's not right, good. Yeah. It's not like, oh, they've sort of succeeded or not. Mm-hmm. Like, they have all failed. <laughs> there's, there's no in between. <laughs> they have all failed. So, but I guess yeah. that kind of that kind of jumps into the next segment, but or the next uh, question. But first is talking about how Miami moved back into the top ten at number six. And the Eagles drop back to number 12. Mm -hmm. Now, my first takeaway with this, (laughs) my first takeaway was thinking about the Eagles. And I feel like this isn't talked about enough. The Eagles, if we all remember back in week 17, 
decided to put Sudfeld into the game. They pulled <laughs> Jalen Hurts, right? They put in Nate Sudfeld, and they tank like crazy in that Week 17 game, just so they could get the number six pick. At least that's what we thought. That's what mm-hmm. everyone thought. Like the reason they're doing this is so they get better draft. If they win, they pick a number nine. If they lose, they pick a number six. Makes sense to lose the game, right? They just did it in a blatantly obvious way. That's besides the point. Mm-hmm. But they tanked to get that pick, and then they just they just trade out of it. Right? <laughs> Was this their plan the whole time? Let's get a dra- better draft pick so we could get <laughs> more draft capital when we trade it away. Even that's a little bit too too uh, far-fetched to plan that ahead. Like, oh, well, if we get the number six pick, we can trade with somebody and get more instead of the nine or number nine pick. Like, well, what? okay, I see your point, and I see why the tanking makes it seem like it's so out there, but it's really not a bad plan. Like, if you're looking, so say they're in week 14, and they're like, man, we're just, we're terrible this year. We're, you know, we're going to be in the top 10 no matter what. Okay, we know we need to build around, you know, Higher ups are thinking, okay, when we start thinking about the future, we need to build around Jalen Hurts. Okay, so now, you know, we're going to be in the top 10. There's going to be a team that's going to want to get out of the top 10. Or wait, I'm doing this backwards right now. That's out of the top 10 that wants to get in the top 10? Yes. Yep. Yes. Back in. And it just so happened, you know, the Dolphins move out of the top 10, out of the top five. Um, and the Eagles are like, hey, number 12 is a good, you know, is a good spot for us to sit, you know, based on who we want, who we need to, you know, get draft in order to support Jalen Hurts' growth, help the team get better. Okay, so maybe, you know, maybe the Eagles are trying to, you know, strike a deal with the 49ers, and the 49ers are like, mm, not quite high enough, sorry, but not sorry. And then, you know, Miami and San Fran, you know, make a deal. Then the Eagles are like, ooh. At 12 still looks good. Let's call them up Miami. You know, they have extra first round picks. Let's see if we can strike a deal here where, you know, they'll take our spot at six. And it, it worked out. You know, I, I still think Miami gets who they were going to take at three at number six. And from what I've been able to tell, Philadelphia still gets who they want at 12. All right. I like the logic. I could, I could definitely. S- I, I still think tanking that game for the six seed was an odd call, especially if this was their end game. But, you know, right. Strikeout Beer over here says they're geniuses over there. I would argue that <laughs> looking at the past couple of drafts for the Eagles, I would mm-hmm. question if they're geniuses. But, uh, you know, looking looking for what they've done right now. Yeah. It's so hard to know if it's going to pan out until obviously they pick someone. But at, at number six, if Miami takes. Jamar Chase, I don't know who like the top wide receivers that we're looking at. Um, who's the other one? More? Um, no. So Jamar Chase has, has been like the top wide receiver taken, you know, any right. mock draft. And he um, sat out last season, so a lot of people kind of yeah. forgot about him. But um, then, other yeah. than that, Devontae Smith, you know, Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, they're up there. Um, so if know, those both. guys go. Mm-hmm. Like before the Eagles pick, and they're not right. there at twelve. Yeah, and they end up having, and let's say the Eagles pick, do pick a wide receiver, even a running back, and they just have a down year. Like if mm-hmm. they just don't pan out the first year, and then you have, I'm not going to say Jamar Chase. Let's stick with Waddle and um, Smith because mm-hmm. you know I'm thinking Chase might be gone even before six. But if they have breakout years where the Eagles should have been picking and they like do like, if they have like a Justin Jefferson kind of year, right? That whole front office is going to get fired. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) this is a gamble for the Eagles right now. They're, Mm -hmm. they're, they're taking a chance that they can still get someone at 12 that will turn the franchise around or at least help Jalen hurts out. But if it doesn't pan out, if they have to stare at another wide receiver that they should have had, have a great year. Oh, Oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure on a front office. I would be I would be scared. Yeah. Darren Clark's in the house. Darren Clark, what's going on? Ten steps ahead. Darren, Darren, hey. Clifford Franklin, number one receiver in the draft. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Cl- Clifford is the big red dog and Franklin the turtle. That's 
I think it's a made up name. Oh, there you go. Is that is that is that actually a person? Uh, not a clue. Oh, I haven't okay. seen that. I I have not seen that name. <laughs> okay. Who's the um, kid that's like five foot seven? There's been a lot of news about the wide receiver who's like five foot seven, but ran like a four three something. I don't know. Uh, He's just like really short. He's supposed to be like Tyree Hill esque. People maybe people love just comparing from, him to Tyree Hill. Oh, maybe is it was it Randall Moore from Purdue? Maybe. Oh, that sounds like, like yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're I think you nailed I it. Think, yeah. Joey, what's up, bro? How you doing? Welcome to the show. Educate them on Cl- Clifford Franklin. Yeah, please let me know who Clifford Franklin is. <laughs> so moving on to Justin Fields, going backwards here. Justin Fields, possible pick for the 49ers, moving up to the third uh, mm-hmm. overall draft pick. It came out today for the pro day for Ohio State that he ran a 4-4-40 four, 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 yard dash. That's a lot of 4 mm-hmm. four, 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 40 yard dash. Sounds like that, uh, what's the that Will- commercial? William Matar commercial. The William Matar Eight 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 eight. Well, that's Salino and Barnes, but Salino, um, Salino now, or is it Barnes? I don't know. But William yeah. Matar is four 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 four. Oh, there you go. That's that's what Justin Fields obviously was going for. <laughs> four. <laughs> so many fours. Stop saying four. <laughs> if he's five foot seven and in pro sports, his nickname is Speed Bump. <laughs> <laughs> The football is like a is, the football is like a one man cold to Clifford Franklin. Clifford Franklin only catching it. Clifford Franklin only one coming down with it. Already typing it. I my, what is happening right now? <laughs> just, I don't, you just keep talking about Clifford Franklin. We got things to do over here. Oh. So my main question here was everyone's freaking out that Justin Fields ran a four four four. Like this is like this is like a game changer. Like he ran a four 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 and like oh my god like he just he just turned himself into a top five draft pick. Why? Why? Why in God's green earth does this matter? I don't think it does. And, you know, I've actually been thinking about this. I thought about it a little bit earlier when I I think I saw the I saw the you know the stat come along um, that he had ran that and. Then, I had just been thinking about the past few days, like these guys don't run in pads. This number means absolutely nothing because they're not in football gear. It, yeah, it, that's that's the other part of this that I also thought of. That I didn't even write down in the notes. Right. I mean the my, the number one thing with the pads that came to my mind was um the Zach Wilson throw. He's like rolling to his left but throws back to his right yep. like forty yards downfield. Mm-hmm. And it was like a perfect throw. I can right. almost guarantee that throw is at least a at least a little less accurate or has mm-hmm. a less chance of completion if he has pads on. Yeah. Like he's just in shorts and a t-shirt and he makes a great little like woo like crazy throw. Your that right. throw is 10 times harder with shoulder pads on. You can't mm-hmm. get that full range of motion with his arms like he did. Yep. That was my number one complaint with pads, but like you were saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, these guys are running in spanks, and that's it. And yeah. the, n- the number doesn't count. It doesn't matter. Put some pads on and run that same speed, don't, and then we'll talk. I've never understood why combine and pro days, just why you're why why you're not wearing pads. I don't like you're going to be wearing pads when you're in right. practice and playing and like in games. Like we want to see you playing games. Like I don't care mm-hmm. if you can jump high. Guess what? This ain't basketball. I don't give a shit if you can jump six feet in the air. Mm-hmm. I don't need to know if you can dunk. I don't give a shit if you're standing. If you're standing still, I don't care if you can jump high. Because guess what? Even if you're, even if this whole point is like to see if you can go for a jump ball, you're running. It's all about position. It doesn't like very rarely are you in a position unless you're like doing some like corner throw, like a fade route in the end zone where you're just right. standing there and you just see if you can jump high. Mm-hmm. That just it's not a thing, and that's the question I put here. Like, what what's the dumbest combine workout or pro day ritual that just shouldn't exist? I mean, you have you have the long jump thing, the standing long jump. Mm-hmm. What the shit is that? What? Yeah, no what? players, even a running back doesn't stop and then jump over the goal line. They're in a running motion. Let me do, let me just. <gasps> 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, what? I don't care if you can jump 11 feet with your feet planted. And, and then right. the other one, so I got to be your bench press. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, is this supposed to tell me if you're able to like, if you have the strength to like stiff arm somebody or something like, like this motion when you're running down a field is a lot different than laying down and bench pressing. It tells me nothing. Right. What is the point? Tell me the point of any of these things. Three cone drill. Who in the who in the hell have you ever seen run a route or do anything on a football field where they go didn't run around a cone and like what is the point of that? There isn't. Everyone made fun of DK Metcalf for his three cone time. Guess mm-hmm. what? He's like one of the better rookie wide receivers to ever hit the league, and his second year was still just as good. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <sighs> I, 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 this is, I, I gave up on the combine pro days, all that stuff mm-hmm. a long time ago. I think it's all stupid. I don't watch it. I don't care about it. it. If someone comes out and says, wow, look at this throw he made. It's a set up, clean, neat environment with yep. almost no pressure, no pads, no defenders. Like if you're at a, if you're in an M- NFL combine, I pray to God you can throw a simple deep ball to someone just streaking down the field without a defender and you'd have no pressure in your face. I pray mm-hmm. you can make that throw. I mean, that's that's my take. Really, <laughs> got off the rails there for a second. <laughs> Whew. Uh, yeah. You got, you, got mean... any more, you got any more takes there? I mean... <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of handle. <laughs> I get, I get why some of these drills happen. You know, it's because, it, like, you know, what? Like, let's check out Beer saying in the comments here. You know, it's metrics that you can, you know, measure everyone against. But do metrics always translate to productivity on the field in a normal situation? I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's what game tape is for. I mean, you exactly. can tell you can tell about anything with game tape, mm-hmm. and the number one example I always go back to is Jadavion Clowney. Yep. The dude was drafted high for one play, mm-hmm. and and a lot of the analysts, as much as I make fun of analysts, a lot of them got it right because they're like, "Wow, look cool! Look at this one play." Okay, now look at the rest of the plays. This mm-hmm. guy quits on plays all the time. If the if the ball just goes to the other side of the line where he's not at, he'll just stop. Right. If he gets beat off the snap by the offensive lineman, he'll just stop. Mm-hmm. And it showed in the NFL. He was lazy. He was yep. got out of shape very quickly. Yep. And he quit constantly. Yep. And then when he decided he wanted to turn it on, he was a monster. But guess what? He just never, got hurt. He got hurt and he just never his motor was wasn't always on. Yeah. So and then I, I just have a fun stat here that I heard earlier today. You know, people like to make fun of slow 40 times as well. Classically, mm-hmm. Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. Now, the, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady are pretty good quarterbacks in the NFL. They, they had a good career. Tom Brady's still going. They were mocked for their 40 times along with the rest of their combine workout. Two of the best to ever play quarterback. Tom Brady's longest running play was 22 yards. Peyton Manning's longest running play, 33 yards. They never even ran 40 yards in one play in their entire career, but yet they yeah. are both first ballot Hall of Famers. Mm-hmm. I end I end my argument. <laughs> <laughs> like I realize I get the whole metric thing. Yeah. But I think that messes people up more often than not. Because Justin Fields, while mm-hmm. he ran fast, he's skyrocketing skyrocketing up draft boards. Because he runs fast. Yeah, he's like a 20-year-old, and we know he runs fast because we see it on game tape. Mm -hmm. Just because he ran fast in a straight line doesn't mean he's going to skyrocket up my draft board. But a lot of people in the front offices see that and go, boy, oh, boy, we got to rethink our strategy here. Like It messes people up more often than it helps them, I think, in my opinion. Right. So I agree there. 
Got a lot of things to catch up on here. Darren Clark said the dumbest thing in any pro sports is the fact they get paid more than 500K for playing a game. Let the comments begin. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem that'll never get fixed, though. I mean, it's just they get paid what the league makes. Mm-hmm. You know, they get paid for the product. And if the league makes a lot of money, then the players like a lot of money. That's just like any company, usually. You know, if the company succeeds, you get a bonus or you get a raise. I mean, that's kind of just how it is. So, yeah, it sucks, but that's what it is. Uh, tr- 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 Joey says, do you guys see a 17-game schedule season being beneficial? We'll get to that in just a second because mm-hmm. we're running out of time, so we're going to probably jump to that right now. Not everyone is ready for NFL. Is that accurate? Yeah. Game tape is against college players. Not everyone is ready for NFL. Is that accurate? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I get it. You know, these teams, sometimes these schools play these no-name colleges, and the and that's where you get all these highlight reels because, they, you know, they make these great plays, and, you know, moving that kid that who makes that great play into the NFL, it's not going, you know, it might not be as good of a, as good of a play. So I guess you do need to see some workouts, you know, what he's got Johnny Manziel. <laughs> <laughs> one of the most prolific college careers in NCAA right. history or CFB history. And he just straight up didn't pan out in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Tim Tebow. Top yep. five quarterback ever in college football history. Somewhere oh, yeah. Here. we. I feel like we've seen multiple those those are quarterback examples i mean there's probably right. thousands of wide receiver running back examples but oh even more or even even more linemen yeah have you know been giant busts great you're a big body and can block well in college guess what you're going against people bigger than you in the nfl and it's probably not going to pan out so mm-hmm. i mean that's just yeah 100 percent. pay them says straight up here pay them i was talking about the longest run by brady and payton Oh, is that accurate? Oh, yeah. No, that's true. Google it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm surprised that Peyton Manning's is longer than Tom Brady. It was actually a 33-yard touchdown run, too. That's impressive. Yeah. I don't know what year it was. I didn't. I didn't take that. I would think. I would. I would think it was with the Colts and not the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think with him as the Broncos, he could run 33 yards. I don't think he had the ability to. Probably yeah. after like 10, 15 yards, he would just slide down and be like. <laughs> that's what i would imagine i would look like <laughs> oh let's get through some of these because uh, this is like we'll do quick news and then we'll talk about the 17 game schedule yeah the panthers signed undrafted free agent wide receiver micah simon uh following the byu pro day micah simon didn't have a pro day last year because of the COVID 19 pandemic ended up going undrafted so during the pro day at byu he caught some passes from zach wilson he ran a 4-3-4-40 Take it with what you will, and it impressed the Panthers apparently. So they mm-hmm. decided to sign him. It's a feel yeah. good story. Yeah, it's you know good to see something positive out of the shutting all the sports activities down last uh, last spring. So I'm I'm a little concerned as to why the Panthers are dra- signing him now. Um, so he didn't he went on. Undra- so it's a good story. I'm also a little confused. He he went undrafted. Right. And not a single team from his game tape signed him. I mean, I mean, I would imagine like just like any undrafted free agent. Right. He'll go to training camp with like 100 people on the roster. And then if he's lucky, he might get a practice squad spot. I mean, right. I mean, it's a fun story. Will he make the team at the end of the day? Probably not. But at least they're giving him a chance. Yeah. You know. Just put him on the roster. Yeah, like a, I don't even know what the number is. Right. How many people do you even have at the beginning of an off season? I feel like it's like 90, 93, I think. Oh, okay. Still, it's still a lot. Yeah, yeah. like right you now got, you have lots to fill. Oh yeah, right now you have all those. You have teams right now are just signing almost anybody right now. Right. So a lot, of, a lot of signing news is there are a bunch of you know lesser known players, but right, you know, people still sitting good. around, <laughs> sitting around <Right>. waiting. <laughs> Let's just bring you on the team. We'll see what happens. There you go. So, but it is, it is cool though, you know, to to deal with that COVID nineteen thing, not get drafted, 
And he, mm-hmm. he could have easily just given up and been like, oh, career's over, not going to make it. Right. But he kept working out. He kept trying during the whole COVID-19 pandemic. He just kept mm-hmm. going, 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 went to the pro day, and now he's on an NFL team. So, yeah, good job. Bruce Arians actually followed through with his promise and got a tattoo of the Super Bowl logo, the Buccaneers wordmark, and with the game's final score. I do not have that picture ready to go. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I should have put it in here, but uh, um, but yeah. So basically, it's the Super Bowl logo, like Super Bowl fifty or fifty five this year. Yeah, so it's you know how the Super Bowl logo was for the Super Bowl, um, and then and then below that it says you know Tampa Bay, right or the Buccaneers. I can't remember, but the score is in there. Um, and then he has the, you know, the Buccaneers logo in the bottom there, but he put it on his upper left back. If that confuses you, why? I don't know. All right. Got it. You got it. Share. Share. This is going to look ugly for a second. There you go. There you go. There it is. Man of my word. When we win the Super Bowl, I will get a tattoo. There it is. 31 to nine Tampa Bay Buccaneers. There you go. There you go. There's the tattoo, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Bruce. Uh, so here we go. The NFL announced today that it will expand the regular season to 17 games. It's the first change of the regular season in 44 years. In expanding the regular season, the preseason has been reduced to three games. The 2021 regular season will begin Thursday, September 9th, and the regular season will end Sunday, January 9th. That's kind of funny. Ninth and the ninth. It's kind of funny, yeah. <laughs> the 17th game matchups will be NFC versus AFC, and the AFC teams will get the extra home game with the assumption the following year the NFC teams will get the home games. Mm-hmm. Just deal with it, folks. Guess what? <laughs> the life ain't fair, so your team might not get the home game this year. Sucks to suck, mm-hmm. all right? The matchups are as follows. So these are your Week 17 matchups. Yep. That's all, oh, that's out already. Okay. I guess the schedules oh, yeah. are out. Yeah, duh. So we have the Washington football team at Buffalo, the mm-hmm. Giants at Miami, Dallas at New England, Seattle at Pittsburgh. That's a good one. Yeah. Rams at Baltimore. Could be good. Arizona at Cleveland, San Francisco at Cincinnati, New Orleans at Tennessee, Tampa Bay at the Colts. That could be good. Mm-hmm. Carolina at Houston, no one cares. Atlanta at Jacksonville, no one cares. Green Bay at Kansas City, damn. There you go. <laughs> Chicago yeah. at the Raiders, Minnesota at the Chargers, and Detroit at Denver. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't. So that'll be good. There's a couple games in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It'll be curious to see when these games are played because yeah. this, is, this is just the 17th game of the season, not the actual week, week 18. Right. Um, but it was also interesting that, it, you know, it's NFC East versus AFC East, NFC South versus AFC South, but then they flip flopped the West and the North. Oh, they maxed it. And I was, I was trying to figure out why. And the only thing I could think of is that those two divisions, like the NFC, NFC North is playing the AFC North already as part of the division oh, rotation. Yeah, so they, so they they had to crisscross them because you know the Bills aren't playing the NFC East this year at all. So it works out that you know, all right, we'll bring Washington in, mm-hmm. um, and then same with the, the you know the South. But uh, yeah, very interesting. And uh, these. Uh, there's a couple of good games there. We'll see how the season pans out and how, see if any other games pop up as, you know, being worthy. But, yeah, should be good. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, like Seattle-Pittsburgh, that mm-hmm. could be a huge game by that point. Who knows? That, that right. could be for a title. That could be for making the playoffs. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But it also could be like week eight, you know, like normally like week 17, now week 18. It could easily right. be just be a bunch of, you know, seedings already set, like, yeah, there's maybe like one or two games that really matter, so mm-hmm. anything could happen by that point. Uh, one one fun tidbit though, well before I forget actually because I didn't write this down, uh, but I did want to bring it up. Alvin Kamara. All right, let's talk about let's talk about this son of a beep real quick. 
So Alvin Kamara, and I'm sure there's other players out there doing it, but Kamara is obviously a high-profile player. Alvin Kamara came out and decided he wanted to complain about adding another regular season game. Apparently, adding this regular season game is an atrocity. We get paid the same, but we have to play an extra game. This is asinine. This is against player safety. Hey, Alvin. Hi. Hi. My name is Dylan. You're playing the same amount of games. You notice how there's only three preseason? It It's just moving it into the regular season. You might have not played that preseason game before. Maybe that's the difference. But that's, right. your, own, that's your own fault, bud. <laughs> that's your own fault if you didn't play that game. It's still the right. same amount of games in the season. It's just one's a regular season game now instead of a preseason game. Right. So and guess what? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I could see them, you know, I didn't see any more, you know, and if there's any changes to the schedule besides, you know, adding a game, but I could see them moving the start of the bye weeks back a week to help, Probably. you know, balance yeah. out, you know, the bye situation better. That way of having week it. five bye weeks, like at least start them week right. six or seven. Right. I think they start, they start week four, don't they? Or oh. is it five? Maybe it's four. I don't know. But bump it back a week, you know, that way we're not having those teams play three or four games and then have to play 14 games yeah. or 13 games. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Even with you know? even with 16 games, I always thought week four was early or even right. four or five. Like That yeah. just seems, oh, oh, you played three games. All right, take your break and just just go for the rest of the season. Like, oh, my God, that's a, that's yeah. crazy. But yeah, so there you go. That's your schedule for week seventeen. That's my take. I mean, do you disagree with my take, or are you more on Alvin's side, or do you just not care? <laughs> I I like the seventeenth game. I don't think it makes. Um, what I thought was really interesting is that they didn't move the start of the season up more than what it is currently, so it's still not interfering with college football. Mm-hmm. Which I thought maybe they, they might do, but instead they're pushing the end of the season into January more, which then pushes the Super Bowl out a little farther. Okay, that I'm that's whatever. Um, you know that really helps the NFL. You know, really get into every other team sports, every other sports is business. Um, you know, going later, but yeah, I'm, I'm I like it. I think it's you know it's it's good you know with the salary cap hit with it the, the NFL took this year, um, you know it's it's an immediate extra game that they can create revenue, um, you know help that salary cap bounce back up next year, you know help these guys get paid, you know with the seventeenth you know extra game with the seventeenth week or seventeenth game now, um, you know it helps players you know with better you know profit sharing, um, as compared you know helps them get over that forty eight percent. Um, you know, as compared to other sports where they're at, players are at 50, 50 percent. Um, but yeah, you know, and this was only this only happened because the NFL had a new media media contract. Mm-hmm. So it was part of the CBA that you know the NFL had to have a new media contract in order for them to expand the regular season, which basically guaranteed having enough money to get the salary cap back. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I'm sure that was a huge part of this conversation. Oh, yeah. To have the salary cap drop for the first time in NFL history mm-hmm. and the in, impact. Look, Just look at the contracts we've been seeing. And, you know, right. teams teams found a loophole with the whole void year thing. Mm-hmm. You, know, you push all this money in their contract to, like, their third or fourth year, but honestly, they could just void the year. So it's honestly just a two-year contract, but all this money is on the back end. So right. you got guys playing this year on like one, two million dollars, but their contract says fifteen, sixty million. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. it's because you're not gonna they're not gonna see that money probably because they're just gonna avoid those last two years. Now you're a free agent. Have fun. Right. Uh changes fantasy football, that's for sure. It does. That's true. Yeah. Unless they just decide to stick with seventeen games. I highly doubt they do that. It does it definitely changes fantasy football. I didn't even think about that. Fantasy football doesn't impact my life very much, so I don't think about it <laughs> <laughs> i mean so you're really gonna have championships ending in week 17 instead of week 16 or 15 now right 
Which, oh, you got an extra game thrown in there for your regular season, basically. I'm sure playoffs yeah. will probably start at the same time. Just have an extra game, that's all. Mm-hmm. But it does impact it, though. It does. Yeah. We're gonna see like we're we're gonna see higher scores out of players like season totals, mm-hmm. like all these records. Like, this is the part with adding another game right. now. It, you're you're starting a new record book. Yeah, pretty much. I, feel, I, I, I don't know if I haven't heard about it or like no one's talking about it. This is a new era. Mm-hmm. Like, let me throw this out here real quick before I forget. Like, fun fact: in the regular in the 16 game regular season era, like an era. It's over. That era is over. Mm-hmm. We're moving past it. It's like we're mm-hmm. we're looking. We're we're living during an, during an era change. This is history. So it's cool, and I think it's. I just think it's cool. You know, in the yeah. moment, people don't think it's cool, but then like in twenty years, be like, remember when they changed the seventeen games? Like it'll be cool later. It's cool yeah. now. <laughs> in the sixteen game regular season era, only the Jets and Bears never had a four thousand yard passer. That's very dis- disappointing. The Jets and the Bears. Can we have a moment of silence for Jets and Bears fans? <laughs> Never had a fourth out. Man, all they needed was one more season for the Bears because now they got Andy Dalton. They would have had their 4,000-yard pass. <laughs> they just waited one more year. No, I'm just kidding. Uh... <laughs> Poor bastards. <laughs> I'm surprised the Jets never got it done, but... I mean... Who have they had? They, Pennington? Pennington, I would have thought would have gotten it. Maybe. Um, boy, oh boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's a, I kind of want to look it up, but we're also out of time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying. Mark Sanchez, no. Joe Namath, he just didn't play during that kind of time where they threw the ball a lot. Right. Vinny Testaverde. Testa Verde. Oh, my God. <laughs> Testa Verde. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chad Pennington, Boomer Eisen, no, Josh McCowan. Gene. Yeah, none of these people would be like, yeah. Right. Mark Brunel, Tim Teal, maybe. No. Mark, Matt Sims, definitely not. Matt Flynn was there for a little while. Yeah, no one that really screams 4,000-yard passer. That's for hmm. sure. Bye-bye records. There will be an asterisk in the book. It's just a new book now. It's not even an asterisk. It's just a new book. Yeah. You close the 16 game regular season book and you say, here we go. 17. Mm-hmm. Big stuff. All right. That's all the time we got for this show. Yeah. That, that's it. But we appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, this podcast will be live on all platforms some point tonight. So, um, yeah, six o'clock next week. This, I think this is our new thing we're doing. So, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. Make sure you're here. Because we will definitely be here because Mama didn't raise no wussies.